Hi everyone, my name is Arthur Govin. I am the partnership coordinator at the Next Street Driving School and I have to fix this camera really quick. Sorry about that. What is going on with this thing? I don't think it's like this. Well, you can kind of see me. All right, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the camera right now. That's all right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll kind of move over a little bit so that you can see me nicely. All right. That, that's a little bit better. So again, my name is Arthur Govin. I am the partnership coordinator at the Next Street Driving School. Um, today we're going to be doing, I'm, I'm here with uh, Jeff Smith, who I'm going to introduce in a couple minutes. And I'm just going to kind of go through some of the things with license testing in Connecticut. Um, you know, there's obviously some some changes and some things to keep in mind and also just you know general knowledge that is good to know before you go and take your license test so you know if you're in the process whether you've started driver's ed or you know you're thinking about starting driver's ed this is a really good one to watch because you get a good idea of kind of what the finish line looks like a um, couple of plugs right up top visit our TikTok channel uh, it has like everything that you would need to know about us. It has all sorts of great tips for new drivers, as well as just some information about the company in general uh, and other things, just general tips for any driver, whether you're new or you've been driving for 20 years. Um, I've learned a lot making those TikToks and uh, you know we love to respond to people's comments and kind of go through all that. So next street on TikTok, Check out any of our other YouTube videos and uh, let's just get started because, again, my camera's a little weird in this uh, scene. So I'm going to move over to the one with Jeff and it looks better again. All right. There we go. That That's much more like it. OK, um, so this is uh, Jeff Smith. And if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, that'd be great, Jeff. Wow. I feel like I feel like we talk about this every time and it surprises me every time how long that you've been here. And I, I've, I've been here for almost five years now, so it's it's crazy. Oh, uh, hold on. Can't we can't hear you yet, Jeff. Let me get your audio. Uh, what is going on here? Having all sorts of little funny issues, but that's just kind of kind of the deal. Okay, can you say something, Jeff? Uh, I'm Jeff Smith. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. Why don't you uh, <laughs> you give that little intro one more time? Um, you know, you've been here. I, they kind of heard my half. You know, you've been here for yeah. Almost, well, been yeah, years. been here quite a while. Time flies. Um, <laughs> 2013, I think, is when I started as a licensed driving instructor. I still keep my license intact. In I still get out with students every once in a while, but I'm uh, a bit more behind the scenes now with the license testing department and making sure that's running smoothly and things are going according to plan. Yeah, and we, we talk can. about this all the time, but I actually was hired into the license uh, licensing uh, department when I first came on. You know, Jeff actually hired me and I was a host for a while. So I do have a a little bit of knowledge, although I know some things have changed. So, you know, we're going to talk about some of those things that are a little bit different from even, you know, pre pandemic and all that, because I know that there's it's actually for the most part, just gotten a little bit easier, um, you know, with some exceptions. But, you know, we'll 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 go through the some of the great positives that have come out of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Now let's get into some of the questions. So, okay, first of all, when 
when is the best time to schedule your license test? So I, a lot of people ask this when they first get, when they first sign up, they say, you know, should I schedule it right now? Or should I wait till I'm done with the class? Or what, so what, what would you recommend? Well, that's a great time to ask for it because that's also the best time to take care of it and schedule it. The second you do have your permit, um, we can teach class to somebody without a permit, but we can't book the BTW hours, the behind the wheel drives and lessons without a permit date. And we can't book a test without the permit date, a permit issue date rather, because then we work uh, forwards. And again, eligibility is a little bit tricky, but depending on the class that you take, uh, and depending how old you are, if you're an adult 18 and over, you just have to wait 90 days. But we can book your test outside that 90, right outside that 90 days, as long as you contact us with your permit issue date as soon after that, as soon as after you get it. Uh, for teenagers, 16 and 17 year olds, there's the option of doing the state minimum, which is the eight hour driving class. And then that would get you a license test date eligible um, 180 days later, six months later. And then if you take the full course, uh, which is 30 hours of class and eight hours of driving behind the wheel with the licensed driving instructor through the through us, um, you'd be able to do test just in 120 days, four months. So it gives you not only a shorter eligibility date uh, to where you can test right after four months, but it also gives you that insurance break too, which helps out a lot. So because us and wherever you decide to test, whether it's through us or at the DMV, are booking out several months and um, getting your test on the books as soon as possible. You can always change it. You can always reschedule it. But getting it ahead of time, as soon as you get that permit issue date, as soon as you get your permit is the best option. That way it's in the books. Like I said, you can change it later on. But if you wait until after the classes, after the drives, you're going to be waiting a lot longer because of how far out uh, everyone's booking. Yeah. Yeah. Because, it, you know, it's it's not just us. It's through the DMV. So, you know, we're we're a lot of the time with booking these tests. We're at the mercy of the, or not a lot of time. We're always at the mercy of the DMV and how many tests that they can provide us. So, yeah, best course of action when you get your permit, sign up for the test. That's it. If you whether it's when you first sign up for your classes or after sign up for your test immediately and check out our playlist on our YouTube page that has how to navigate your student portal and signing up for a license test is on there as well. So that's a really good thing to do. You don't have to call in. You can just do it right on your student portal. But um, yeah, so just kind of uh, a little recap of those eligibility dates. So for 16 and 17 year olds, if you do the eight hour, it's 180 days. So six months. If you do the full course, then it is 120 days from when you got your permit. And if you're an adult, it's 90 days regardless, right? Right. All right. So just keep that in mind. Um, get your permit. You know, that's yeah. another thing. People, people say like, well, do I need to do it before I start the classes? And technically, you don't need to get your permit before you start classes, but yeah, get it, your permit as soon as you can. Exactly. It just, just helps with the time. Yeah. And that's another thing too is schedule your permit. So that that's all done through the DMV, but I do we do have a lot of resources on that as well, including another webinar uh, where we go through the permit testing process. And you want to sign up for that permit test. It it books out just as far as those license tests. So do it a few months before you turn sixteen, or as ma as far ahead from when you turn 16 as you can, because you want to just be able to take it either on or around your 16th birthday so that you can just have it. Um, okay. So on test day, what are some of the things, what, what do you need to bring? Because, you know, I know that if you go to the DMV, there are certain documents you need to bring, but what do you need to bring if you test at one of our locations? Well, that's, and again, you've mentioned changes in the recent past, and that's one of them, which I'm happy to say uh, a lot a lot less than you used to. Um, when you come to, just like when you come for a behind-the-wheel lesson with us, you do need closed-toed shoes, closed-heeled shoes, 
could only take in tests and flip flops or sandals. Uh, not that people are thinking about that in the winter, but um, you definitely want a sneakers on. Your permit has to be with you at all times. And then of course, please also check your permit. Um, nobody's perfect. Uh, DMV sometimes puts the um, corrective lenses restriction on a permit for a student that doesn't, that passed the vision test with flying colors. So we've heard of that occasionally, just double check the permit. But if you do need corrective lenses, you of course have to have those on when driving at all times. Uh, that's why it's a restriction on your license for that. If you've since got, uh, you know, laser surgery to correct your eyes, you can go back to the DMV and get that. But until it's corrected on your permit or license, um, you would have to have that with you at all times. So they will check for that uh, during our drives behind the wheel with our instructors. And of course, the DMV agent who administers the test uh, with us would be looking for that as well. Um, at the very current moment, there is a short testing application that we have you fill out at the time of the test. Uh, when testing with us, this is something that is going away um, in any week now. Uh, DMV has come into the digital age, and uh, they well, have. The you know, it's only there. 2022, so yeah. they've, they've finally. It's, take, it's taken a while, but we have seen very impressive. Um, steps forward from the DMV to come into this age. DMV's agents uh, have the tablets that, um, and because of what we process ahead of time, they have the roster with all of the proper information of the people who are testing that day. And that goes, and they already have then access to your DMV file, which they then update with the test results. So there's gonna be very little paperwork. It's really, the application that we have you fill out is really just a backup. Um, everything is done through the portal and then it's updated later that evening. And so everything's really taken care of hands-free. There was the uh, $84 check that used to have to come with. This is for the seven year first, seven year license that you pay for when you get the actual license. Um, that is actually done online now also. So when you come to the test, you don't need to bring any payment of any kind. The application again is just a, a safety measure that we have for now. And 24 hours after having passed the test, you will log on to the DMV website, a link that we will give you uh, at the time of the test. And then when you get there, you can pay the $84 for your seven year license and it's mailed out to you immediately from that point. That's super uh, interesting about the payment option. That's, I didn't know. Yeah, that. so really again, that's, that's re that has changed recently. So we don't, we're no longer the, middlemen for that um he's it's simply that you go on to log on to the dmv website when that evening 24 they, they ask for 24 hours please wait that time um and then they'll see that your account is completed and that you pass the test you pay the 84 dollars. they mail you that something again worth mentioning right now is that the old i think when you were um in the testing department arthur you had to hand over the test results to the closest DMV. Yes. Uh, you had to drive yep. them to the, after the test. And then, and then the student had to go and pick it up, you know? Yeah, they had to go to that DMV and pick up their license three days later. None of that is the case anymore. And I'm happy to say that students can leave having passed the test at our testing location with a temporary license. As long as they have the permit, and actually this is the paper a little note card looking piece of paper like this along proud with you finally got your permit <laughs> is what equates to a temporary license for 30 days as you wait for the physical copy to come in the mail that, that's so a lot of changes and uh luckily not a lot you have to bring with you uh, yeah it seems like less and less each time you know we talk which it's good because the yeah. the forms you know yeah things are getting streamlined which is which is really nice that's great um so when you so you're there you have um you, you know you're basically you have your permit your glasses if you need them closed toed shoes and the license testing application that we have right now um and you're there what happens when you get there you know who is there what, what's kind of the so process asked, there so you schedule a time online or you can call in and we can help you with that 
but we ask you to get there 15 minutes early. And what we have, um, again, similar to what you used to do, Arthur, we have mm -hmm. somebody there, an experienced testing host, who will sit you down, sign you in, um, just ask a question or two there, um, and then talk to you about what the test is like. And this is the real benefit of testing. This is really what it's all about here at TNS. First of all, it's a one-on-one -on -one environment, right? Everybody's scheduled at a different time. Um, there may be a little bit of overlap, but if you come 15 minutes early, it will be a one-on-one -on -one that you have the chance to ask questions about, and more importantly, hear about what other students have done so far that day, which is not anything you could get anywhere else, right? If, unless you're the first student of the day, right. we can give you some idea of where you may go. But later on in the day, as students continue to go and we get that feedback, we learn what the DMV agent's been asking that day, where they've been taking students, and we can tell and prepare the next student that much better knowing that knowledge. That being said, there's nothing that is going to stop that DMV agent from changing things up during the very next test. Uh, being a licensed driving instructor, I can tell you if I have three lesson ones back to back to back on the same day, I'm not going to go the same place, same route with all right. three students. So the DMV agent, you know, whether they get bored or they just want to try it out or they're falling behind and want to speed things up with a new route, whatever the reason may be, they can change certain things. Uh, but it's very nice to prepare yourself for what has been asked already that day by the same students who are taking the same test. What are some? Of, OK, so do we have I, I know that I mean, I know the answer, but. <laughs> what kind of resources do we have for students, you know, when they are getting ready to take their test? You know, do you know what what's available to them? Well, we do have for taking their test, obviously, to for any driving school in Connecticut in order to take a test with that driving school, you do have to take at least one two hour BTW. Le I always say BTW, sorry, behind the wheel lesson mm -hmm. uh, with that driving school. So that is an enormous help, uh, especially if you're only taking the one, if you're doing the full course, you have four two hour lessons, which is great. And we can teach you exponentially that much more than just in, in a two hour lesson. A two hour lesson actually does go by really fast, but that is one resource that we have, especially if you're testing out of the same location that you're driving at for that lesson. That is, that is huge. Um, it is yeah. an eight minute radius of where you're testing from is going to be the streets that will be asked for you on that test. When we have a little bit of an idea um, of where you could go, it could be anywhere within the eight minute radius, but what we have available for people online, and I believe it's emailed out once um, your test is scheduled at a specific location, you will receive a practice route that is made um, and again, it's really there just to show you these kinds of streets where we may have seen K turns and three point turns happen before, whether it's a loop or straight down to uh, a parking lot plaza down the street and back. That it's really just to get you familiar with the area where, that you can do on your own outside of the driving lesson that you take with us. The best piece of advice I can give anybody outside of getting the, the standard 40 hours of driving experience, driving hours under your belt is to obviously become as familiar as you can with the testing location. So wherever you test at, whether it's a DMV or with us, you want to not show up there without having driven there um, before. Yeah, drive around and, um, yes. you know, just get an idea of what the surrounding areas are like. Because you'll find in a lot of these locations, um, you know, especially our locations, I've found that there's not a lot of different places that they could go, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that it's it's pretty intuitive where that they where they might take you and some of the turns that they might take you and just keeping it within that range um, is is always a good thing. So why? So I'm going to I'm going to get to it now. What are the top reasons why people don't pass their tests? Gotcha. Yes. Knew this was coming. Yeah. Um, and it's usually the same standard. I'm going to give you the standard three that we usually always see. And then okay. maybe just a one or two more on top of that. Great. Um, but we students still, again, pick up some bad habits at home with within 40 hours. Again, if we best case, well, one case scenario is if you're doing the full course, you're taking care of eight of those 
40 hours with a licensed driving instructor, which is great. They're going to make sure that you're doing everything by the book, which is what the licensed DMV agent, the administering agent is going to ask for and expect, of course. Um, outside of that, the other 32 hours are still time where the student may be picking up bad habits, one of which is obviously speeding. And it's not only going too fast, but also too slow. So everybody knows it's illegal to go over the speed limit. The speed limit shows you the speed, maximum speed you can go in ideal conditions. And so some students take that and think that, okay, well, five below is, is safe. If you're going 20 and a 25, that's too slow. Um, you really want it in ideal conditions. You do want to show the DMV agent that you've built up the muscle memory and the reaction time to stay at a particular speed limit. And also that shows the DMV agent that you're scanning ahead in order to see that either the speed limit has changed or that you're following the current speed limit. So with just saying that, a lot of students are like, oh, I'm just being cautious, I'm being safe, I'm gonna go five under. That's not a good look. You wanna show that in ideal conditions, you can be at the speed limit because that shows the agent, again, all of that, that you've seen what the actual speed limit is, that you don't think the speed limit is 20 and a 25. You see that it's 25 and you're traveling at 25. If you are one or two above, one or two below, if we were one or two above and you fluctuate and you come back down, that's not going to cause a problem. If you're consistently one or two below, again, not causing a problem. If you're consistently three above, two above, and there's no fluctuation, you're steady at, you know, in this example, 27, 28 miles an hour, that's cause for alarm and that's breaking the law. And so that's a problem. But you have that you have that leeway. You yeah, know, they understand that you know you're going on hills or whatever it might be, and you're uh, you know you, as long as you keep it in that range. And yeah, again, if right. you've driven tight for, range. Yeah. for the forty hours, um, yeah. at least you should be comfortable enough to be able to handle the car in that way. Um, Absolutely. All right. So speed. You know, everyone knows don't go fast, but also don't go too slow. Yes. <laughs> um, one of my favorites to talk about is uh, running through, or not, yeah, rolling through stop signs and right on reds. Yeah. So there's, of course, the legal stop, which is considered the full three second stop at zero miles an hour at the foot thick white stop line, or at the actual, well, that comes first. If there's no stop line, then you stop at the stop sign, right where the post is, you draw an imaginary line, and that's your legal stop. After that, you may very well need a safety stop, which is just creeping forward to see around a corner, a brick wall, a snowbank, a tree, whatever it may be. You do you can't make a safe turn out of, let's say it's a parking lot, without creeping forward a little bit. And that's your safety stop, right? That you don't have to commit to a three-second stop once again because you did it for your legal stop. You do have to stop and clearly look left, right, left just to make sure that, again, it is clear. You can lean forward over the steering wheel and look that way if you feel as if the nose of your car is getting too far out there. But a lot of people just go straight to the safety stop, and that's a problem. The legal safe foot thick stop line and the stop sign is five feet back, and that's where you had to stop. So you have to commit to both the legal stop at the stop sign or the stop line, and then the safety stop if one is needed. Right. So a lot of people just go straight up to the safety stop, knowing that they're rolling past the white line, but slowing down and stopping. It's that's illegal. And that, again, is a habit that a lot of people see at home that they just can't. They have to break the habit. They have to first commit to the safe or yes, uh, legal stop. And then if needed, go to the safety stop. Same thing with right on reds. Um, a lot of people go up, this exact scenario plays out uh, every once in a while during our tests, whereas if students in the right lane with three cars ahead of them, all turning right, and that's the intention, no right on red, there's not a sign saying you can't do it, so it's legal to do. Every car is just rolling through, I'm sure they're looking and they're taking their time, and they're rolling, but each car is just rolling through that right on red. And then it comes to the student and they do the exact same thing. And what you need to do if in, you intend to turn right on red is treat it like a stop sign, which is once again, stopping for the full three seconds at zero miles an hour 
at that stop line. And then only if it's safe after that, continue to turn right. Turning right on red, again, it's, it's legal, it's safe to do. It, well, you have to make sure it's safe to do uh, as long as there's no sign saying not to do it. Um, <laughs> I, I think if on, you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, next. no, I know, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if you, I have no, you know, I personally see no problem with turning right on red on your test if you are comfortable with it. But every other instructor at the next street will tell you just don't turn right on red on your test. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's what I, when I was instructing and when I was a testing host, I always would just say better safe than sorry. Don't turn right on red because a lot of the time it just gives the DMV an agent, another thing to look at, um, yeah. especially in a more highly trafficked area. You know, of course, if, if it's very quiet in that area, and you know you really feel comfortable and it again you're allowed and that's fine as long as you do it legally <laughs> but uh i actually we made a TikTok about this and uh we got a lot of uh a lot of people who who disagreed it was like no like you have to turn right or whatever and i, and I was <laughs> i was just saying like i mean you know hey again get comfortable with it because eventually you're gonna have to do it you know or not have to you're but you're to probably want to gonna yeah. want to do it you know yeah but you know, don't, don't feel like you have to. Um, yeah. cause again, as long as you're, you know, it's, it's not a maneuver you're ever, you know, you're ever required to do. And that for that reason, the DMV agent shouldn't ask you to do it. Right. And it's only, it will save you maybe a few seconds or maybe a minute if you do do it. Um, but there's no harm in, in waiting for yeah. it. Uh, um, all right. So we got, make sure you do a full stop behind the lines. You know, if it's a stop sign, you wait the three seconds behind the white line um, and then you can inch up if you need to and do your safety stop. Uh, and if it's a light, <laughs> wait behind that line until the light turns green. If it's a if it's a red right on red, you know, use your best judgment and inch up and, and go if you need to. But make sure you always at least do that three seconds stop. Yeah. Um, um yeah. And so the number one reason why students fail, and we, again, we, we see, we do still see this occasionally, is left turns at intersections. Yeah. So tr with traffic light intersections, if you're turning left without a, an arrow, a green arrow, then obviously you do have to wait for oncoming traffic who has the right of way. And there's 100,000 situations where the timing has to be exactly right. And that's what needs to be practiced, at, both at home and obviously that's what we'll teach you in our driving lessons, but turning left, cutting off cars or not going when you're supposed to is a indicator to the DMV agent that you're not ready to, to drive on your own. So whether it's, you know, you, they have to recognize if you get a solid green, oncoming traffic has a solid green too. If it takes them a second to move, you still can't do anything. Right. You're, you're only, you're being communicated by the traffic light that you have right of you know you can go straight or take that left and you have to wait behind that stop line until it's clear to go what we do want to teach is anticipation so there's a difference though between anticipation and blocking the box so anybody that's already taken the class should know that blocking the box is when you get a green light right away you see the line of cars but you head into the middle of the intersection anyway and you stop there at zero miles an hour so that's the problem there's no end in sight. You now you're blocking the intersection for any emergency vehicles that may be happening or may be coming. Or if you do it well after visiting an intersection with already a green light, it may turn yellow, may turn red with oncoming traffic still coming and oncoming cars still trying to beat that yellow light, which is wrong, but still leaves you in the intersection for when the light turns red and now you're turning left on a red light. So again, it's all for all those reasons, it's what the DMV agent is looking for. They'll likely have you in a route that takes a left-hand turn at some point in order to see how you can handle that intersection or a intersection with a left-hand turn. But the anticipation part is important because you never really, you want to make more of a left turn at a 90 degree angle than a wide turn. Again, for all the parents out there, please don't turn left right from that stop line you want to proceed straight into the intersection for a little bit longer before then making that hard left turn. And that makes just much more cleaner lines. 
you don't cut off anybody else's corners. Um, and with that last car coming, you know that you have to be in the middle of the intersection where you need to be to make that left-hand turn. You can meet them out there in the middle. As long as you don't stop at zero miles an hour, you're not breaking the law, but anticipating instead, and then taking that left-hand turn when you need to. If, and I, I get this question all the time, if you're in doing that exact situation and anticipating and seeing that, and one car comes up out of nowhere and you can't do anything, then but stop because that's what you have to do and that's the safest option. Uh, the DMV agent is going to understand that too. Right. Because again, the DMV agents I know are not people that want to fail anybody. They want to see you pass and they understand the situation. If it makes you feel better, you can talk about it out loud. Just saying, oh, I was going to turn here, but this car just came up out of nowhere. I'll wait until after they pass. Um, so it's turning left can be tricky and it's something that should be practiced heavily. And again, all, all interse intersection maneuvers, right? Turning left, knowing when to turn right on red or mm -hmm. at all and then knowing when to go straight and who has the right of way in which direction and especially if arrows are involved yeah i mean we actually have a great visual interpretation of uh this again not to plug our tiktok again but it's on our tiktok of the we we have a, a little series of the top reasons why uh people don't pass their tests and and uh it's all taken from it's the three that we just mentioned and uh, w the one about, you know, ha getting better at anticipating because, again, people get a little bit confused as to, well, I can't stay. You know, if, it, if it's a long intersection, if the line is set pretty far back, you might have to kind of go out a little bit as, you know, just before you can actually make the turn if that makes sense so just be be ready for that and again if you're practicing enough um yeah, take those left turns over. go go in yeah. those intersections um and our, obviously our instructors are going to take you in those intersections but go in those when you're practicing with your parents too i know that um some people will you know i i always say I use this analogy a lot when it comes to practicing where, you know, we can, it's, it's like batting practice, you know, it's like swinging a baseball bat where I can be, you know, Hank Aaron and I can show you exactly how to swing a baseball bat, but in eight hours of showing you how to swing a baseball bat, it's not, you're not going to just be really good at it. You know, you have to go home, you have to practice it and you have to just keep getting those reps in, um, with your parents and, you know, whoever's teaching you how to drive because, you know, and, and make them do those things, you know, it's not just driving around the block, like make them go to those intersections and, and, you know, do those more difficult maneuvers because that's, Again, and I, I was I would always tell this to parents too who were maybe a little bit nervous about driving with their kids uh, before they had their license. It's like, you know, they're gonna be driving by themselves pretty soon. So if you don't feel comfortable driving with them, then maybe that's a sign that they shouldn't be driving by themselves. You know, that that's how that's how I always looked at it. Yeah. Um, really, really good point. Yeah, don't just go to school and home like you have to go yeah, elsewhere you have exactly. to go to different towns different areas you have to drive at night you have to drive in the rain you have to drive in snow if you can if you yeah. get that experience with a some experienced driving or driver next to you that's exactly you know get that city driving in too. get the highway driving get all of that in um and make sure that you we give you the checklist we get we do a checklist when you drive with us give that back to you so you can look over what it was in and copy it and do those things again at home. Yeah. Uh, I do just want to add two more. Yeah. yeah. Lists Go ahead. I, I know you had a couple more. Um, the back end is going to be asked of you on the test. So you know, this going in, you have to practice it to where you can get it on the first try. You will have more than one try to, tr if you end up on a line, the DMV agents will give you another chance not to start all over, but to correct what you've done. And, but you know it's coming. So that should be no reason why you're not an expert at backing in by the time you take your test. Um, whether it's left back in, right back in, you do want to be proficient at parallel parking as well. Pulling in might be asked of you on the test too. 
a lot of tests. Again, it all depends on the DMV agent, but you leave our parking lot, you go out, find another one halfway through the test, do the back end, come back to the classroom and pull into a parking space to end your test. So pulling in, backing in, again, you know to expect it, Please, you know, be prepared. Uh, and then and, and the and other one, one was- really quick thing with the back end yeah. too. Um, again, we have a million resources on that as well. <laughs> but what I was really going to say was, um, you know, a lot of people maybe don't always see the, the benefit of backing in after their test, you know, and backing into a spot is a really good thing to get, especially if you're a newer driver is a really good thing to get in the habit of because especially in busy parking lots, I, I'm a huge advocate. I, I was on a, a radio show, uh, you know, advocating for backing into spots because when you are leaving, especially if it's like a mall or a busy parking lot, there's a way. I, I know people might get annoyed that you maybe hold up traffic for a second backing into a spot if there's someone behind you. But it's a lot worse when you're backing out into a busy parking lot with, you know, you can't see most of the time. There's people who just kind of walk around and, you know, people just walking with their shopping carts, not paying attention, little kids, all that stuff. You get used to backing into places because also you never know where you're going to live. Because if I didn't know how to back in well, where I live right now in the parking garage that I have to park in, I would never... I wouldn't be able to survive. I, I I have this little spot. It's in the corner. And if I couldn't back in, like, I'd be done. So I don't know. Just just really get good at it and keep doing it. Um, but, you know, also just don't – Jeff mentioned it. You know, try to get it on the first try. But, you know, don't panic. And if you're on the line – because a lot of the time the DMV agent, you know – they're just people they're they're not evil they're not trying to fail you and a lot of the time they give you a little bit of a of a hint where they're like are you good you know you know if if you're on the line or something you know are you good then fix it if you feel like you need to and adjust it but don't start over that's that's a big thing yeah that's that's a good Slight that's a good one Arthur. yeah if you you I totally forgot about that. But yes, don't admit that you're done unless exactly. you know you're in between the lines. Yeah, if they ask you, are you done? And then they check and you're on the line, you won't get a second try after that. You need to know that you're in between the lines. That's a really good point, Arthur. Yeah. Um, um, and I'll, I'll let you do the, do the last one. Yeah, just really quick, the last one. A lot of people, a lot of students don't get the experience of an emergency vehicle or, mm -hmm. or driving during while well, school buses are out. Yet... You know, our tests are for eight o'clock to one fifteen during the day. So you will come across some school buses yep. and just randomly some emergency vehicles that, you know, in an already pressure filled 15 minute test, which is what our tests about 15 minutes, um, they either freeze or don't react the way they should. And so knowing the right way to interact with emergency vehicles, whether they're coming at you and you have to pull over even though if they're not in your lane or if they're coming up from behind you and you need to see them as soon as possible and react to that as well. Same thing with school buses, you know, that yellow lights mean that they're about to stop and that the stop sign's about to swing out. So prepare accordingly and know about that going into your test because we see it and some students just have either never experienced it or freeze up and it doesn't end well. So that's something that you want to know about and Again, you can't go out looking for those things, really, but just know about it and be prepared. And that way, if it happens on your test, you, you'll you know how to res respond. Yeah, and again, get used to, uh, along with the school buses, is just school zones in general. Mm -hmm. If your testing area is near a school zone, um, even if it's not, uh, drive by your school when you're practicing and get used to going that speed limit of if it was a school day um, because you know before you take your test because again you're going to be taking your test during a school day unfortunately a lot of the time you can't practice during a school day because you're in school but you know it's giving you that experience of 
understanding like I do have to go a little bit slower. I do have to yield to pedestrians. A lot of the time there's the pedestrian crosswalks and stuff like that. So um, just be, be ready and mindful for that. Um, but yeah, emergency vehicles is tricky. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, but you knowing that you have to pull over, whether it's coming at you or from behind you, yeah, just be ready for that. And, and also, you know, I, I, I remember I would get told this all the time where it's like when there's one emergency vehicle, there's very likely to be another one, you know, and don't just sit there waiting for another one, but be prepared to pull over again if you need to. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, how do you, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but how do you actually sign up for a test with us, you know, and, uh, and, and take a test at our location? Yeah. If you are, whether you're doing, you can call in and we'll walk you through it step by step. Um, but we also encourage you to go online through, um, our website and everything is there in order for you to click on and ask and the details are in descriptions are in there. Um, and again, if you're doing it, doing it all at once, getting the, the getting the class, getting the drive, getting the, um, uh, road test is all, so, that much easier when you're all doing it at once. Our website is very easy to use user-friendly. Um, and if not, or if it's confusing or if, you're thinking that you can't um, test with us or you have some sort of exem exemption. We have chat as well, uh, where you can talk to a live person uh, in chat over our website, or again, call in if it's a confusing situation for you and you just need some clarification. We'll be happy to help you either way, but any which way, um, just try to do it all, all at once, I think would be the best way to go about it. And, and, how many testing locations do we have at this point? 20 active locations. 20, 20 locations state. across the state. So from um, what's the farthest east? W Willimantic, um, Willimantic. Yeah, Willimantic and then all the way to Stanford. So yeah. we have it covered. Um, yeah. And then again, you know, testing at the DMV is an option as well. And uh it's uh, it's all the same same rules and and things to think about, uh, but definitely, especially there because are... no one wants to go to the DMV, <laughs> um, there are definitely advantages to taking it at our locations. Um, there are yeah, there are significant differences. I don't want to make it sound like it's any easier, but sure. Um, DMV again with some certainty, I can say that we've never had a student go on the highway. Yeah. Um, it's and we see that you know DMV on purpose is our by highways, um, Weathersfield, Bridgeport. You know most of them are all by some exit right off a highway uh, for easy access, which is on purpose, and they're usually in more congested areas downtown for obvious reasons, and so we do see um, a lot more you know parallel parking at some of these locations, some highway driving at these locations. The test itself takes about 45 minutes, but that includes the vehicle inspection, yeah. which we take care of uh, before you even get in the car. The very first student of the day might have to do uh, just turn on the blinkers, do the uh, headlights with the DMV agent. After that, the DMV agent, not, it's not part of the test after that, right? The DMV agent is going to sit in the car. If you're testing at the next street, they're going to sit in the dry, passenger seat. We're going to round robin students and each test is, like I said, right about 15 minutes, um, including the, uh, at the DMV branch, including the vehicle inspection and everything that goes, it could be anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes, typically. And one, uh, uh, just a couple other great things about, um, you know, when you test at our location compared to the DMV, um, at our locations, the DMV agent tells you right then and there in the car, a lot of the times, in my experience, when we would go to the DMVs, um, they would get back, they'd go back in the office, they'd make you wait. I don't know why, but they would make the student wait for, you know, yeah. five to 10 minutes and then come back out and tell you. So you're also, you, you know, you eliminate that, you, you know, right away. And, um, you know, it, another 
big thing too. Using one of our cars is a huge advantage for you. It gives you one lo major less thing to worry about mm -hmm. because passing that DMV inspection, um, they're pretty particular with with certain things. You know, you can't have any tint on any window. So that that is a big thing that people don't even realize that they have a tent until they go. <laughs> and then the DMV says, no, you can't test with this. Or, you know, if there's any sort of light on or, or the, there's just certain things. And, um, when they test in our car, they have that passenger brake. They generally right. feel a little bit more comfortable. I mean, just think about if you were going to test someone and take them out for their license test, you've never met them. You have no idea if they can drive or not. Having that break gives you a little bit of ease, you know, and it'll probably make you a little bit happier. Um, and again, that I, and I know Jeff can, can talk on this too, but you know, they are, they are just human and they, they don't want you to fail. You know, they, they're there to just make sure that you're a safe driver and that, you know, you're not, it, it, they, cause it's ultimately they're responsible for putting for giving you the opportunity to drive on the road. So they want to make sure that they're putting someone out there who, who deserves it. So just try to kind of put yourselves in their shoes and, um, and just understand that, you know, just, just drive like you've been driving and, and <laughs> you're ready. You know, this isn't the yeah. test that you, that you didn't study for, you know, this is something that you're ready for. Um, so Jeff, did you have any other things that you wanted to, talk about or kind of close with before we we ended um no i think we're i think we covered uh most everything yeah um uh, like i said we do have more dates coming um yeah. we do if you're looking for an earlier test date we do have students switch off often uh whether they decide that they need more time or they're just feeling under the weather at the moment we do get students last minute switching off a test. So feel free to continue to look, whether it's booked now or you're, and you're, or you're just not booked and don't see anything and waiting for the next opening. We do see movement on those, uh, on those, on the schedule. So we, so continue to look. Uh, we do have a waiting list on the website. If you're in that, you may get uh, a few more emails or even phone calls if we have late openings uh, for a location that you're looking for. Yeah. And, and also all of our social medias, whenever there's, you know, any sort of big openings, uh, we always are, are up to date and posting things about, you know, openings for, for tests and last minute, last minute, things like that. So, you know, look out for those things and Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, as always, it's, awesome. it's great to talk to you. And, um, I think this is, I don't know, the fifth one that we've done fourth or fifth oh, something fun. like that i said number four so I, I think this is the i think it's the fourth so um i'm sure i'll have you back in a few months and if you missed any of this you know if you're tuning in right now or you tuned in late it's going to be automatically uploaded to our youtube and facebook right away so you can re-watch it um you can you know take a look back at some of the other ones but this one has obviously the most up-to-date information so um Thank you so much. And Jeff, again, thank you. And uh, yeah, take care, everyone.